Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to answer the question, why create with masterboards, as well as how to create with masterboards, giving you ideas to streamline your creative process and make the most of those masterboards that you make. One of the best reasons to use masterboards is you can do the work once and you can make multiple projects using that work. So here is the master board that I created and I will put a link to the video so you can see the 30 minute creative session. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do once you have a master board is figure out how you're going to use it. What are you going to use it to create with? So I've made some window templates of the, say, of the sizes that I typically create on. This is a composition book. The other one was a six by six card or a six by six mixed media board or six by six wood panel. I've got five by sevens and I'm just moving it around the master board and trying to decide what I like. So once I did have a basic idea. So this is the next 20, 30 minute session that I would do. I would play with the substrates and cut them out here. And I'm starting with whatever the biggest piece is. And in this case, this time it's my seven by 10 art journal. I'm also going to cut a six by six piece. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use it on a wood panel a mixed media board or on a card, but that gives me three options. So the first session, a lot of times people talk about uh, not having a lot of time to create with. So I'm going to give you some ideas of ways and places to break it up so that roughly 30 minute sessions. So the first 30 minute session was making the master board. The second is playing with your substrates and deciding what you're going to create using your master board and cutting it out. As I said, start with the largest size and work down. I would also in that 20, 30 minute session, include gluing it down onto the various substrates. And I'm using gel medium because the master board has some layers to it. And I'm using a brayer to make sure I get good contact. I find with gel medium, it takes a little bit to dry. So I'm going to glue all my substrates down assembly line fashion. And then I'm going, then I can leave it and everything is going to dry. And that'll make life easier. And you also maximize or minimize the amount of cleanup. You're pulling out one supply, your gel medium and your brush, and you're going to clean one brush here and you have five projects. Now, if you're one of those people who works best, just doing one project all the way from beginning to end, feel free to do that. You do what works best for you here. I'm gluing it down on the five by seven canvas board and then I'm gluing it down onto the mini composition book using gel medium for all of it and the brayer to make sure I have good adhesion. Doing it assembly line is a great way of saving time and saving cleanup. It also, I find can help you focus because you're only doing one thing. Once you're done, check it off the list and move on. I'm putting a layer of gel medium on top to make it a non-porous surface. Now the card base, the one that's going on the card, I am going to edge it before I glue it down. And the reason for that is it's just going to protect that white border that I have. I cut this down to five and a half by five and a half. So I have that white border on the six by six card base. 
and I'm just edging it right now. And I'm going to continue and I'm going to edge all of my substrates once they're dry. Now that will help you visualize and help you plan the composition because it just frames your project. I know that I may have to come back and tweak this later on, but by doing this now, it helps me set up the composition, which is the next 20, 30 minute session. Here I'm using a makeup sponge. I'm not using my angle brush and shading. This is a canvas board, so there's a little bit of depth there, and I like having the black around it. And now that, that the shading there is dry, I'm just going to glue this down onto the 6x6 card base. And I'm thinking a little bit, I'm going to talk more about focal images in a bit, but I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to put the Julie Nutting doll on this one. I'm putting the gel medium on the back of the masterboard piece, the instant background, which I'm basically using it for on all these projects. So I make one background and then I have five different ones and I'm braring it down making sure again that it's all clean, all adhered, I mean. So here are the four substrates. They're dried, they're edged, and that's pretty much two sessions. One, making the master board, and two, getting it to this stage. So now my mind is turning to selecting the focal image, starting to build the composition. What do I want to do? Now again, I'm gonna do an assembly line and I'm gonna do it for all four of these backgrounds. What's great about that is it's the same color scheme. So that helps focus my creative decision-making. So as I'm pulling napkins, printables, stamps, or stencils, I'm focusing on this. So I go to my napkin stash. This one's called Classic Daffodils, and I like the yellow in there. There's that little bit of yellow in the background, and having a yellow focal image is a definite match. I'm playing with this on the various backgrounds that I have just to match the size of the focal image to the background. This one is called Little Ducks and it has two different ducks. These two as well as the ones with the heart in the middle. And I've cut it out of the napkin so that I can play with it when I'm setting up composition. And here I'm trying it out on the 5x7 and the 7x10, and it would work for both of them. So right now I'm just auditioning my the possibilities. This napkin is called Sunrise tails and it's this bear and the colors of this really match the background. I know I would shade around it so it would stand out more than it is right now. Right now it's looking a little blendy blendy but it would totally work on the larger 7x10 substrate here. This is Thea, it's from a napkin, and I like the yellow, it's the same kind of flower that is in the background, so that's why I would pick that, and the yellow color works. 
This one's called Alley Pink. And I didn't choose this one, but I really like how it looks with that daisy spread stenciling in the background when in the pink. So those are some options that I can use. And to be honest, I end up using even coming up with even more options. This one's called Colorful Butterfly. And you've seen me use this one. This is the six and a half napkin. It's a larger size. It has different, it has white butterflies that you can color and it has these yellow ones. And I'm just going to cut this one out because I think I'm going to use it because, well, you know, butterflies work on everything. So there's that white butterfly and I could paint that whatever color I wanted. So I'm thinking this is just the right size for the five by seven. It would also work on the six by six. Remember right now I am mainly just thinking of the possibilities. This might be all I do in a creative session. So once you decide pretty much what you're going to do. You want to prepare the focal images and that could be the next 20, 30 minute session. I love that heart in between those ducks and I pulled out a sentiment that I had that I knew would go well with it. So here I'm going to start preparing the focal images or what I think I'm going to use is focal images. Now when you're using napkin focals you got to peel off the two excess plies and I'm going to glue them down onto a piece of copy paper with fluid matte medium and the reason for that is I'm gluing that onto the master board. The background is made and I don't want the pattern and the color from the master board to come through. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to do both ducks. I know I'm not going to use both of them. I'm just keeping my options open. And I know that whatever I don't use is going into my stash, which will save time the next time I create, because I have something ready to go in my stash. So that's another reason to do multiple makes. You're setting yourself up for faster creating or more successful creating at another time. When you're creating multiple makes using a master board, you're also thinking of more options and you're going to try different things out. Every one of these multiple makes, I wanted to do something slightly different, a different technique, a different type of focal image. And again, here I'm making it in a session. Once I'm done, I can wash my brush. I have one brush to clean up, not f five times clean up. So now I'm going to do the stamping and I'm using my Tim Holtz stamping platform and this is a Julie Nutting doll and because I've taken the time to get my archival ink out and the stamping platform out, I'm going to stamp more than what I need and whatever I have extra is going to go into my stash. And I use my Julie Nutting dolls a lot in my art journal pages. So I know that eventually I will use it. So I'm going to grab another page and I'm going to do several.
I am not a great stamper. Even with the stamp platform, I still can make a mess. But I know I'm going to be painting these and I've long since given up being perfect. I also used these crazy birds and I stamped several images of them to use on that mini composition book. They're just the perfect size for those mini composition books. So the next step is to fussy cut things out. And quite often I do this in front of the TV. I have the whole pile there and then I go and watch TV and I do my fussy cutting. And no, I'm not going to make you watch me cut everything out, but it's just easy peasy. So the next session, you want to play with the composition. And you'll notice here, I have moved things around. Actually, I had a sleep in between and so I had a bit of a different idea. I remember this Felicia Daisy stencil and I'm going to use it on the card. I'm going to use that duck, that duck I decided and I'm going to move the Julie, Dutting to, Julie Nutting doll to the 5x7 canvas board. So now I'm playing with the sentiments and I'm going through my various sentiment packs and deciding what sentiment I want. I'm shrinking them down or blowing them up to fit the composition and the way that I want to do it. I can still change my mind, but I'm fine tuning and finalizing my decision. And once you know how you want it and you have a rough idea, Help yourself out, take pictures of it so you remember when it comes to actually gluing them, everything down and putting it together. So now we're going to tweak the background. Since we have an idea of our focal image and where we're putting our sentiment, you might just want to tweak it. Here I'm adding the some of the pink stenciling with the daisy spread stencil. I want to add a little bit more pink. I want to fill in some areas that are empty based on where my focal image. This is also the time that you might knock back things that you don't want. There were some of those dark blue dots that ended up being where I didn't want them to be. So I just gave it a light wash with white gesso. So if I put that, we have a big empty space here and I'm just going to add another pink daisy. That one I'm covering up and my sentiment will go there. Remember the master board is just the jump start. Sometimes it's perfect and you don't need to add anything to the background and sometimes you're going to add more to it. I'm trying to position my Felicia Daisy stencil and I've decided that I'm going to keep the white border so I'm just going to tape over, tape that edge so I get a clean edge there when I stencil through that stencil. And this is also holding the stencil down. So at this stage, I'm adding a lot of color. I'm bringing out the paints and because I'm using the same master board, I'm sticking to the same paint. So if I have some pink on my board, I can use it on multiple projects. I can use some of the yellow. I can use the black. I'm not going to be, I don't need a whole lot of colors. I'm sticking to one color scheme. Here I'm just masking off the edge of the daisy. This is me just helping myself out. I could have probably have stenciled without doing this, but you know what? This is going to help 
it's going to make it easier. And I've decided to use black to stand out. You're still going to see the color in the background. And I put the black acrylic paint on the makeup sponge. Taking a peek, I'm liking what I see. I'm giving this a little time to dry and then I decide for the middle I'm going to add some texture using the TCW gold modeling paste. And I'm just applying that to the center of this stencil. And this goes with the yellow that's in the background. So that I'm setting aside and I'm going to wash, take time to wash my, that modeling paste off of my stencil. So when I've got multiple makes on the go, I can let that sit and dry. I don't have to sit there with the heat tool and dry it and I can just move along. So I'm just finalizing the positioning of the sentiment and my girl here. which sometimes takes me a long time. And I realized that my sentiment was on sticker paper. Now, I know I'm going to paint my Julie Nutting doll, but I also re remembered that I had some stamped dresses that I stamped out of gel prints. And I found a yellow one, which is what I was going to paint it. So instead of painting it, I'm just going to glue that down. Now I've decided that I want to add a little bit more yellow to my background, just like I added the pink. Now that I've got my final composition established. Since I have the yellow paint out, I'm going to use some of that yellow paint and paint my little crazy bird here. Give it the base coat. I know I'm going to do some shading and I'm, go I'm going to add other colors to this to beef up the color. This is just the base coat. And you can colorize with whatever you want. Pit markers, watercolors, whatever. I like using, using acrylic paint. And here I'm mixing in some of that magenta, just to, I don't like ever using just one color. I like kind of that blended look, getting different tones and variation. And I know that I'm going to do some finishing. I'm going to do shading later down the road. So I know that's going to be another session. And then I'm just going to let that dry. And I have my paints out, so I am going to colorize my Julie Nutting doll. I have some of the Naples yellow and the magenta. I add a little bit of white gesso, and it's pretty much a good color that I can use for the flesh tone of this girl. You can add brown to it if you want a different tone. You can mix and match your paints however you want to get whatever flesh tone you like. And again, I know I'm going to come back and shade that. So I'm going to paint her legs, her arms, and her face.
and I decided that I'm going to paint her hair brown so it stands out from the background and I'm mixing in a little bit of black again to get multiple tones and once again I know at the finishing stage the finishing session I'm going to do some shading and highlight so this will add to it And I'm just mixing the color for the headband and I'm matching it to the dress. Getting that yellowy orange color. So there we have our focal images. We have, we've selected the um, sentiments. We've added color to the background. We've tweaked it for the composition. Oops you know what, I'm gonna, I like it better this orientation. So now I'm just going to glue everything down and I'm going to use gel medium. To glue my focal images down and the sentiments. The gel medium goes on cloudy but it dries clear. And I'm putting a coat on top because I want to get it to be a non-porous surface to aid when I do the shading step in the finishing stage. If you do uh, craft fairs or you're making multiple that you want to make for, for gift giving and you want to make lots, using a master board really helps streamline that process because you're not starting from scratch every single time. It really maximizes your time. And I really, then the master board when I create a master board, I find I am way more creative than if I was just doing a single solitary background with an end project in mind. I think I'm more creative and I end up with way more interesting backgrounds. So this one says, Dear Autocorrect, it's never duck. If you do make a master board, I would love if you would tag me when you, if you post it in social media, whether that's Instagram or Facebook. Now I had these leftover pieces and I went to throw them away and I thought, you know what? I bet I could just use these strips and cover an ATC. So that's one more piece to doing. Instead of throwing it out, I'm turning it into art. And I'm just layering these up one by one, mixing and matching the colors. Cutting off the excess and then I can layer it up more.
creating using a master board you're also using a lot of stuff on the master board that would otherwise end up in the garbage pieces of napkin little pieces of book paper here i'm just layering up the strips going the other way just to add some variation to the background why not i have the strips so almost the entire 11 by 17 paper was used very little of this ended up in the garbage and to be fair i could have put that in my accidental art journal page as well i could have just put it down on a page and it would be the start of something else so that's it that was all that was left was those little little bits so i'm going to let that dry and we'll come back and finish it so the extra focal points that I'm not using on these will go into my stash. And we are moving to the finishing stages. One of the finishing steps is to outline your sentiments. And for that, I'm using my Posca pen. This is black. And I'm also going to edge around, kind of give this a border on the card. And I'm going to do the same on here. Remember I said sometimes I might have to tweak this? Well, I added some paint on here, and so now the black border had paint on it, so I'm just touching it up. And I want that diffused kind of look with the black for the edging, so I'm using my angle brush and using my shading technique to get that. And then I'm going to add some shading and highlights on the focal images and I use black acrylic paint right across the board so I've got black on my page on my desk right now so I'm going to be using it to shade not only the nutting doll but other focal images as we go through this session and you can see how this makes the girl the focal image stand out And I'm even shading a little bit around the sentiment. It gives that diffused look. Now this can be popped into a frame or you can put magnet on magnet on the background. Here I'm adding some yellow highlights to her hair. And I keep going down. I grab and I'm doing the same thing on each page. And then I see this ruler here that I have out that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I decided, hmm, wouldn't it be interesting to use it to make a border? So I grab my Posca pen and I'm giving some waves there. Now I glued the ducks a little bit off the bottom so they looked like they were floating. And so now I've gotten rid of that effect by adding this border. And then I'm painting out giving it a frame of black and i like using the angle brush for that it always gets into the nooks and crannies and i just find it very usable in fact the angle brush is probably the only brush that i spend more money on the other ones i get 
you know, Walmart, they're not expensive brushes at all. This is one where I will spend a little bit more money because I use it for my shading and I use it for this and it tends to need to be a little bit higher quality. So I've painted that out. Now I'm going in and I'm shading on the inside to get that diffused vignette kind of look. I'll list the sentiment packs, my sentiment packs that I've used on these various ones. I think it was my possibility pack, embrace possibilities, um, it's about time, but I'll list them below if you want to check them out. It's great having those digital sentiments you, because you can shrink them, you can blow them up to any size and fit whatever project you have. So here I'm shading and this time I'm shading on the paper, not on the focal image so much. Although I do a little bit of both, but mostly it's on this on the side. It gives a slightly different look. Play with it and see which you like better. And then I'm shading my crazy bird. So you can see doing an assembly line, you have the brush, you have the black paint out, you just go and do all five projects. and shading around the sentiment. And don't forget the back of the book. Now I'm just adding a little bit more color here. I'm getting some deeper orange and, and yellow oxide just to make the tweak the colors. Here I'm just taking some of that magenta and I'm painting over the checks in the dress just to tie it in more with the colors that are in the background. This was more orange before and I'm just making it a little bit more of that magenta color. So even though you have things that you're using that are very generic, not made specific for it, you could tweak it. I colorize the duck as well. I add some yellows and oranges to the duck just to tweak the color and make it stand out a little bit more. And then I do some shading for around the beak and the wings. I thought the border was just too ordinary and plain. So I grab this Swiss dot stencil and I'm using both the magenta and the Naples yellow to get that modeled look all the way around the border. Kind of ties in with the dots that are in the bows on both of the ducks and the checks that are in the background.
just make it a fun little border. Just dotting the eyes. Oh, forgot to trace around the sentiment here. And then I grab my white Posca pen to add some line work. And I think this made a big difference. It just made it all work together. As I said, I will list all the supplies, specialty supplies, names of the napkins and the possible, uh, the suggested napkins and in the description box below in one of my various affiliate links. Adding a border with my Posca pen on here. And then I decide, oh, I should finish the ATC. I had this stamped image from this darkroom door butterfly set and the sentiment from my winged wonders sentiment pack, follow your butterflies. And I decide I'm going to glue the butterfly so it's overhanging the edge. And, you know, we've done a lot of yellow focal images, but a black and white focal image also looks really good on a colorful background like this. So that's another alternative for you with the master board. So now I'm going to splatter them and I'm splattering with gold and then I splatter with black as well. And you can see I use my fan brush for splattering. And there are the five projects from one master board. I love all of them. I think they're the same, but they're different. I hope you picked up some tips along the way, something that you can use. Let me know what you found interesting or what you learned in this video. Join my Facebook group. Now this ATC, I could glue onto a mini canvas like this four by four, or I could glue it onto an art journal page, do another background and it is, becomes the focal image mini composition book to, to use at the craft fair or to gift someone and a card. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, go get creative.